times 4.2, red 2 is 1.7. Vietnam was a war fought from the sky as much as it was a battle of grunts on the ground. And with few large-scale engagements, innovative air ground tactics became an imperative. For the Marines on the ground, Marine pilots attacked enemy positions while flying full speed at treetop level. They knocked out hidden enemy supply lines, inserted and extracted patrols from dense jungle growth, and pulled off medevacs in places and situations where no one expected helicopters to go. Of 16. The development of direct air support control brought Marine air ground teamwork to a new level. Point Cairo, 28014, over. Uh, this is 8-1, roger out. Each center within the fire support coordination center of a division command post helped orchestrate a complex array of air, ground, and seaborne firepower. Fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, artillery, offshore naval guns to support the troops on the ground. A fourth of all Marines who served in country were airmen, and the sheer volume of the ordnance delivered, troops airlifted, and casualties extracted topped all previous conflicts. Flying from carriers and bases in South Vietnam, F-4 Phantoms and A-6 Intruders joined Navy and Air Force planes in taking the war to targets deep in North Vietnam. But for most troops who fought in Vietnam, nothing more characterized the war than the unforgettable whoop, whoop of the helicopter. Vietnam was America's first helicopter war. As the war progressed, helicopters were everywhere and doing everything, providing ground support fire, inserting and extracting recon teams, airlifting units, ferrying in beans and bullets, and, time after time, evacuating casualties. Evacuate the man to the rear to where we can get him out on a chopper. Do you understand? Over. Speedy medevac, along with the bravery and skill of Navy corpsmen and surgeons supporting the Marines, helped cut the ratio of killed in action to wounded by half as compared with World War II. Marine aviation's presence in Vietnam began in 1962 with a handful of Korean vintage whirlybirds flying sorties in Operation Shoe Fly. When President Johnson committed U.S. Marine ground forces to Vietnam in 1965, Marine aviation units deployed there concurrently. Bases such as Da Nang and Chu Lai, Marble Mountain and Phu Bai were joined by fixed wing and helo squadrons operating from the 7th Fleet in the South China Sea. Construction crews at Chu Lai laid a metal mesh runway and installed carrier-like takeoff and landing equipment to create a fully operational SATS, short airfield for tactical support, in less than a month. Here and at other bases and on carriers and amphibious ships, ground crews worked around the clock to keep the air crews flying. When fighting and troop levels reached a peak in 1968, so did air missions. Half of all the deployable squadrons in the entire Marine Corps, 14 fixed wing and 14 helicopter squadrons, were in Vietnam during the massive Tet Offensive and the Siege of Khe Sanh. But as American strategy increasingly focused on Vietnamization of the war after 1969, Marine troop strength in the air and on the ground diminished. Most air action was now against targets in North Vietnam and neighboring Laos and Cambodia, or in support of South Vietnamese ground forces. The end came in 1975. Marine air crews evacuated the U.S. Embassy in Phnom Penh as Cambodia's Khmer Rouge advanced on the city. And just weeks later, with Saigon about to fall, Marine CH-53s, CH-46s, and Hueys airlifted 9,000 Americans and South Vietnamese from Tan Sinut Airport and the U.S. Embassy to nearby carriers. Shortly before 8 a.m., April 30, 1975, it was all over. The last Marine security guards coptered off the embassy roof and out of Vietnam. For America and Marine aviation, the long and bitter war had ended. <laughs>